Initiating system one. System one loaded. The Gorecast is brought to you by American Horrors, the greatest uncut horror channel in the world. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, all horror. As well as the station of decapitation without your head. America's longest running horror channel, www.withoutyourhead.com The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. One. What's up, Gorecasters? Welcome back here to the Gorecast with me, Johnny Deadly, and all the rest of these cinema loving sons of a bitches to the right of me, left of me. That's the one. We're somewhere. Yeah. We're here. Right for you, but left for me. Because right, you're the first box were the rest yeah <laughs> God, just hello katie hello juror obvious. hello carter hey katie hey juror hello hey carter hey, how are you hey how's it going hi how are you hey how are you hi how are you um yeah so today we have uh two movies up on the block for review the reason there's only two this week is because we have an interview with uh one of the directors he was unfortunately not able to make it live but we uh we're pretty fresh off the interview, actually. We only finished up with him maybe about 20, 30 minutes ago. So yeah. um, we have a quick little nippy interview in the middle of the show with uh, the one and only James Cullen Bresick. Hello, Bill. Hello, Billiam. How are you? Welcome in. Hello. 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 Is it me you're looking for? Nope. Oh, yeah. Well, that lady made my face, even though she cannot see. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that music video. God, I forgot Hello. that. Kind of creepy that she did that. I kind of don't know how that happened. Made out of clay, I think. Made it? out of clay, too. So not only did yeah. she have fantastic modeling skills in the first place for a blind person, but also managed to... I don't know. I don't know. Is it? Does it mean that Lionel Richie didn't exist? He was actually in her head? Maybe. Oh, wow. Or maybe she was only blind for a little bit. I mean, she was... Oh, I mean, it was Recently like a temporary. Blind. Oh, so she. Oh, they, they left that out of the story. Like, yeah, so it was like, like oh, she's she blind like at the start. Acid through in her eyes or something like that. Yeah, really I won't lie to you. I'm pretty sure that's not temporary blindness <laughs> if you get that done. Just well, no, I meant. Uh, yeah, te I, I'm, yeah, I meant more recently. Like maybe she just got blind recently, and she knew what he looked like, but she's blind now, so she was remembering what he looked like before she had acid through in her eyes. I'm doing a damn good job making a. Yeah. The dark side of Lionel Richie. It's probably not, though, is it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was, in, well, I was alive in the 80s, but not when the video I was paid. I won't lie to you. I, I, I would have been more like, oh, she wasn't actually blined. Do you know, it was a case of like, someone like shone a really bright light at her before the start of the music video. <laughs> or she's faking it. Or, she, or, she's, <laughs> or she's just faking it, yeah. yeah. It is a music video, so they're, they're not fully truthful. Damn liars in music videos. I won't lie to you. If you if you were faking something, that'd be the way to go. I'm a blind woman that's able to imagine people in my brain turn them into clay models, but it turns <laughs> out the clay models are real people. Or did those people exist before I made the clay model? I don't know. I'm after putting a real dark turn on the Lionel Richie classic. <laughs> uh, well, that's well. I mean, can't get any darker than to just having acid thrown in her eyes. So, it is true. That's I that's where I'm going. That's my interpretation of the song. Part of the music video, not the song. Jonathan, so. can you come to my house and have a 08 night? 2008 night? 
<laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Going old school. That was an eight. Maybe you guys can get together and make uh, clay things of Lana Richie. I can guarantee you that actually, I won't lie to you, if it was 2008, that's probably not one of the stranger things that could have happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of, I was thinking in my head there as well. I was kind of going, hang on a second. When, what age, where was I when, yeah. I was fucked up enough in 2008 that if there was clay around, I'm sure I would have attempted something. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure around about that time would have been where I got woke up one night by a knock on my door. Two lads sticking their heads in going, Giz, get up, we brought you a house party. And a conga line of college people walking past. And then hefty back. It, it was an interesting night. We don't do Did business any... on continental grounds. We'll take it to the ocean, <sighs> Bill. It'll be oh, fine. We've all got rafts. It's hard. Did any of them try to make a clay thing of... Uh... International waters. Oh, Richie. Blind Richie, Jesus Christ. I forgot. I was talking to Giz's story about the conga line. Tristan started high school in 2008. I thought you were I was, Irish. I was four years out of high school by 2008. I graduated. <laughs> Adley's just like, four. nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured. 2008, that was the year. Uh, never get your mind. Ray, get your ray finger out, cuz. <laughs> that was the year. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's the year I should probably forget. Hello. Is it me? Yeah, I know you're right. Yeah, hence high school. What? Don't you mean secondary school? That's what's called here. Yeah, but she's not there. She's here. Oh! Ah, there we touche. go. Did you not know you... Katie wasn't in America? Nah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. Okay. It could have been like... I don't know. I... Didn't really think this through. Anywho. You, you um, did not. I heard that feathering off instantaneously. <laughs> I heard the gears grinding to a halt. <laughs> how do I smell toast in my bedroom? How, how to live this? Oh. I thought you were going to say, why do I smell baguettes again? No. Okay, there we go. My, no, stop doing a spindly dindly. Internet? Y'all wrong. I'm on Mars. Mm. Do they call it secondary school on Mars? Wait, what? Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Phil, Lionel Richie in a horror film, Mike Myers knocks on the door. Hello? Is it me you're looking for? And gets stabbed. Probably. Or <laughs> if it was the new Bloomhouse Mike Myers, it'd probably be some stupid word. One, this. Can, one can dream. One can dream. Anyway, speaking of dreaming, uh, we're talking about sure. first because it makes more sense. Because there's... Yeah, thank you. Gold. It's a good segue. Gold um, so this is a, this is a movie from uh, 2002. 2002. This poster is fucking with me. <laughs> it's called the Sleep Experiment. It might sound familiar because it's been on the internet for ever. Dude, I got 2022. That's what it said. Yeah. Oh, I heard 2002. Maybe I said too My fast. Bird. Anywho. It's a movie about a bunch of guys to get locked in a room together. And they're not allowed to sleep. The end. And I won't lie to you. From a man who's done several <laughs> days of no sleep, some of those people need to man the fuck up, to be blatantly yeah. honest. Yeah. It's, uh, they try and do this little experiment where, like, we're going to keep people up for 30 days because soldiers. We need soldiers to not sleep so they can kill each other awake. And they do this. And... Doesn't go very well for the no. people involved. Turns out people who haven't slept for 30 days are quite cranky. Yeah. They don't even, to, be to, fair, they, to be fair, they actually don't even make it the full 30 days before they start no. getting cranky, as you put it. I. <laughs> eight days. I was going to say, I thought it was like eight was the longest they were. Um, it's... Nah, there was into like four or 13 or I don't know. Well, I got to six or seven and I was fucking loopy. It was didn't murder anybody weirdly enough so, so. Oh, well you didn't have any of the gas though I forgot about the gas yes yeah. the gas yeah. makes you all oh my god I stepped on the curly fry oh no 
pick that up. Yep, that's, that's, what the gas, that, that's, that's what the gas makes you all, all right? The gas makes yeah. you all yeah. like you just stepped on it. Now, a... before we get a little more in-depth into the plot, although I won't lie to you. We just did. We just kind of do get in-depth into the plot. <laughs> oh, there is more to it. No, there is, there is more to it. Before we get in-depth to it, I'm going to preface this whole review with the fact that the guy's picture, the face in the picture is pretty much my reaction to this movie. Yeah. Yep. The whole time. Am I screaming in anger? Maybe. Am I yawning? Most probably. <laughs> I am probably the only one out of the lot of us that seem to enjoy the film. Yeah, but, but I, my no problem, problem is there. there is a lot of potential for a really good movie in there and they fluffed it. Uh, I think, honestly, I thought it was going to be worse than it was. I thought it was well acted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. The, the, and shot the very the, well. Yeah. Yeah. The way, the, the way that the film is presented is um, you have a doctor who's approached by two cops. They say that there's been um, a recent leak regarding the company that he used to work for. And you have a this, Yeah. We, we just want to ask you a couple of questions in regard to this leak. And Just a couple of quick little questions in regards to leak and human yeah, rights it's, it, abuse. It's, <laughs> it's primarily it's primarily concerning an experiment he was involved with, in which five prisoners were given the opportunity for early release, provided they could stay awake for thirty days while being administered this drug designed to keep them awake. Um, over the course of the thirty days, their cognitive functions will be tested with various different physical and mental tests. Just to see how they're getting on. On the surface, it sounds fucking nuts. Who the fuck would volunteer for this? But at the same time, you know, they're potentially looking 30 at... 30 years, 30 days, 30 years. Yeah, right. 30 days. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're they're all more or less lifers. Now, they don't yeah. admit that to each other when they go in at first. They're all, you know, playing it off as in, oh, I'm a thief and, you know, I skipped yeah. out of my taxes or whatever else. But Except for one psychopath with a terrible goatee who's pretty much like, I murdered people. Oh, no, he said first that he evaded taxes. Yeah, and then he said he murdered a girl. Oh, yeah, after Three a while, he... Well, yeah. after a while, I he, won't lie to you. he wasn't doing a really good job of convincing me he got done for taxes. Yeah, right. He wasn't. He wasn't. But um, very Hannibal. Yeah, as the mm. the way that the story is presented is basically as the cops interviewing this doctor, <laughs> and we see the progress over the course of each day with the the lads, you know, doing nothing for the first couple of days, and you know, just you saw to... Phil's message as well, Carter. Did you? So, <laughs> yep. I see Carter's wearing his Ain Al girl t shirt. <laughs> and then I looked at it and I was like, oh, his necklace is blocking letters in the middle of that. <laughs> there we go. Really we love you too, Hanley. Oh. Uh, see you later, Hanley. Bye, man. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, the, the, the story is presented as an interview whereby. The doctor is explaining the you know the the details of the experiment. We're seeing it in day by day situations. Each prisoner is supposed to be given a diary so that they can record you know their own bad idea. Mental, yeah, just <laughs> to, to record their own yeah. mental state. Um, over the course of the interviews, we find out that the doctor wasn't just a researcher involved. He was actually the head researcher, and he might have kind of designed the experiment and a couple other interesting things that we yeah. find out along the way, including oh, the yes. fact that. Including the fact that, strangely enough, that one of the cops has a bit of a personal connection to this case, mm -hmm. and that's just... It, it, it I think it's okay it's, to get into it, it's 2022. Yeah, it, it turns out his dad was one of the prisoners that was involved He's in it. He's the Irish guy, I would imagine. Did, I was going to ask, like, did they ever specify? Because I no. kind of started getting names. He kind of, I won't lie to you, he looks the head off the Irish lad. Did you think that... Okay. I didn't think the Irish lad, the, the whole point was that he didn't have any kids or any family. I, he looked like it. Uh. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Joseph. How are you? Hey, welcome? Joseph. Is it the but, Irish um, lads? I fell asleep. The movie, the sleep experiment no, works. No, it doesn't. It put it me does, I don't, it, I don't it, think it, it like, ever said. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it I, doesn't think he, I think he looks He looks a lot like the Irish lad. It just might be casting-wise. It's just he looks but anyway, a lot like the, the Irish lad. Over the course of the film, we get a rough outline of the different characters backstories I guess which works into their delusions because after like day four or five they start seeing things you know there's the big bald dude who's in there I can't remember why he was in there but oh yeah that was it his daughter went fucker. missing his, his daughter went missing and he went tracking down the people that went that got her missing and he got violent with people and as a result he got locked up he put, um, uh, he put down two soldiers that, that's later on dude We're ta I'm no, talking about the no, reason I'm talking there. about the flashback they said he attacked like two soldiers or some shit. No, that's when they're trying to pull him out. He 
that's what he does when they're putting him out. Okay. The I flashback like it was, is... Yeah, I thought that was the flashback. And they said something about us. He would he had attacked soldiers or something like two of them. You know, and it kind of looked like in a bar. <clears throat> so I thought that yeah, he, he attacked somebody in a bar. They could have been soldiers. I don't think. I think not you're on duty. Yeah, I think you're getting it mixed up because when there's when the lads go into retreat at the end, there's two that that get fucking that get mauled there. But he does jump lads in a bar, and the the idea. I think that because it's never said outright, but I think the idea is that those are guys that he thought were involved with his daughter's disappearance, and that's how he ends up getting locked up because he's a big dude. So one would imagine he kind of went off the rails. He's a hefty chap. Yeah, oh yeah. The, the guy with the goatee um, claims that he basically killed anybody that disrespected his mother, and then implies that he was the one responsible for your man's daughter's disappearance. It's the kind of the the researcher. Needless to say, that goes as well as expected. Yeah, uh, at this stage, you know, it's... That would have gone as well as expected on day one, though, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't know why the fuck he pushed He's himself an, he that was an idiot. His... All I, we can say, know, all we can say is that... Just, at that I think stage, he was just testing the waters. No, at that know, stage, he enjoyed pushing people. No, at that, at stage, that stage, there were eight it, days in, he was batshit fucking think, crazy. Fifteen days in, so whatever yeah. level of craziness he was at beforehand is... Yeah. Now, we do see their progression. We also see that one of the guys is um, getting dragged out every few days, and he's claiming to have an asthma attack. Uh, hey, Rochi. Um, oh, Rochi? Yes, actually, it is the creepy pasta. That's exactly what that this is. That is literally what it's based on, yes. Yeah. yeah. With just some so, stuff added into it. Yeah, so, um, like I said, your man gets, there's a guy getting dragged out, and it's pretty obvious that he's the plant. Now, they have the, the film itself is actually broken up into chapters. There's chapter one, the investigation, chapter two, chapter three. There's it, one of the chapters is labeled The Imposter, and that's kind of where the coughing fits that lead to my asthma kick in. Um, I must have missed the part because, like, I think I went from chapter one to chapter four, and it's like, I don't, uh, I don't know if that's what, how Dance numbers me, work. Like, you also fell asleep during this movie. <laughs> With my eyes open, I may just, just. My eyes were looking at it, but I think inside something just went and turned off. I, I personally, I found it interesting because the the premise of the scientific experiment and the fact that it was laid out as a criminal interview, uh, like a police investigation, rather than what I thought it was going to be, which would be you know a bunch of lads lined up and we'd end up having to find out you know fucking backstory for every guy individually and testing process who gets in and who doesn't. I didn't think that actually get stuck in a room until like the last fucking. 45 minutes or something so like I said I wasn't expecting much this was better than what I thought it was and it managed to do enough to keep me entertained and to keep me watching for most of it and yeah I, there was stuff that I thought they did they could have done better the like I said the cop that decides to go investigating on his own at night into the house that's unlocked is just like gee call for backup call for backup you're a fucking idiot but at that stage it did feel like they were trying to wrap up the story i guess kind of it finished it off. seemed like it kind of like the first i don't know like the first 30 minutes or 40 minutes or so was kind of like a slow build and we're just like finding shit out which normally happens and then it was just like that last like 20 minutes or so just like boom here's all it's insanity and it's just like oh just, whoa like let's take a chill pill you need well, to ease into some of these things I, mean, I was happy. Fair, I kind of got the feeling that the credits were going to be following soon. It's a secluded room, I and mean, once something kicks off, it's going to kick yeah. off. Yeah. You know? I, like, it seems like it's more doing the usual, I don't say trope, but like it seems like it's the usual thing I say for movies that I normally just don't like, where shot well, acted okay, everything else garbage. I... My... Honestly... For the most part, I thought, you know, like I said, shot well, acted well. I thought the story was good. It's just that the delivery of some parts, particularly near the end of it, just because they didn't know what the fuck they were supposed to do. Like I said, this it is based on... It a bit, I think. Is... Yeah, this is based on a creepypasta. They changed a bunch yeah. of stuff. It's far more yeah, horrific really. in the original uh, creepypasta. Yeah, I would say the creepypasta, and it's a lot more... Visceral. Oh, that, and it's Graphic. like, I don't want to say supernatural... But, like, there is a thing to where, like, at all of a sudden, these guys had superhuman powers that well, they were stronger than they were supposed to be. And they they're off. able to avoid being death dead, even though they've, 
you know, yeah, was, had self mutilation and they played all off of as, them. Yeah. They played off as side effects of whatever gas they were being pumped with, which, if we're going the mad scientist route, okay, I'm willing to I'm willing to go with. You know, particularly when it, when they're saying that you know they don't respond to any form of sedatives or anesthesia. Of course not. They're probably fucking. Their adrenal glands are probably on fucking overdrive at this stage, and they're yeah. probably yeah. I thought which, that was which would I thought also that was a bad into, decision on their part. Yeah, I mean there there is let's call, let's say there is a pseudoscience that can go with the whole they're stronger, they're faster, we can't put them down because their adrenal their adrenal not glands just your adrenaline, problem. but I think it's like yeah. Once you get to that level of sleep deprivation, your caveman brain starts to kick in a little bit. Another part of it, like yeah. you said, we don't know exactly yeah. what the gas was in the gas. All we know is that it was designed to keep people awake. So from that point on, you can use whatever pseudoscience you want, and it can fucking look at you know you can base it on real life stuff, and there is a way to go. With this, they decided to take the basic notion and build their own story, whereby they have the prisoners interacting with each other. Now they could have in the in the creep past anyway, the way that it's described. But they have more of a, a scientific methodology put in day by day, and especially in regards to the police investigation, because the idea is that these deaths occurred and now there is repercussions for it, as opposed to the original story in which it's Soviet era Russia and it's all in the name of the state. Now, the, the scientist in question, the, the, the researcher, does say, I was brainwashed into thinking I was doing the best thing for the government, and he's using that as an excuse. We get a nice, I thought, a nice little twist at the end. Rochi explained that very well. Psychotropic effects of their minds breaking. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was a nice, I thought it was a nice little twist at the end whereby it turns out that, you know, this wasn't so much an accident as, you know, a planned experiment, so to yeah. speak. You know, I, 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 I like the ending of it. It was just mainly getting to it that was my the, biggest problem. The journey, yeah. To, Right, to, for film guy to come in and talk about, or sorry, for film production guy to come in and talk about the film production side of things, it, it's actually fantastically well shot. Like, it, it, there's there's never a stagnant moment during it, even though there's a lot of stagnant moments in the conversations, in my opinion. But um, the police interrogation scenes are lit really nicely. It's real moody. Um, it's, it's a little twinge of black and white and some lighting coming through um, some shutters away from being full-on film noir um with the the feel of it the acting is impeccable like everyone does a really good job yeah. with their characters it's just that the story it kind of never really goes anywhere until it does in a and landslide of, of shit like 15 to, minutes away of, from the end of the movie from what I've been told like, I genuinely did fall asleep watching this and they like <laughs> same with the original creepypasta they, like we said they 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 flesh it out a lot because obviously the original story is a short story, so you can only do so much. So it's like a lot of the police interrogation that that whole thing is added to it. Yeah. The original actual story is just we put five prisoners in this thing, and there's a gas, and we checked on them, and they were supposed to for the soldiers because they were testing it to see if they could keep soldiers awake uh, nonstop so that they can you know it is an advantage in the war, and then at then then they obviously start going crazy. It's just like a lot of, like I said, a lot of the stuff that like with the police interrogation that was all added from the story. And it's just like obviously it fits, but it just doesn't I don't know. For the, the police interrogation stuff and the Honestly the, it just I was actually okay with the police interrogation. Like that actually kinda gave me Yeah something for, to do. For yeah, me, you know. Like I said, because <clears throat> of it being a short story in the creepy past, you'd expect some kind of fleshing out. What yeah. I thought, what I thought it was going to be, would have been the selection process of prisoners. Maybe fucking, you know, um, the the experiment being maybe stuff borders. leading up to the experiment exactly more the, the back the, end. The fact that it went with a police investigation was what got my attention first and managed to keep my attention because it wasn't what I was expecting and it did inject a certain amount of tension to things where I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting a very slow build, whereas having the back and forth between the detectives and the scientists at least gave us something else rather than selection process, experimentation, then the guys in the tank and that's going slowly. You know, I, I felt that if they're going to flesh it out, I thought that was a good way of doing it. That being said, yeah. though, I think they if they had stuck with how things went, that could have been a not only a more visceral film, but maybe it could have come off a bit better. They could have been able to to 
you know, have the story be a little bit more entertaining, I guess, because of the fact that the breakdown seems to happen quicker in the original story than it would have in this. Yes. No, I'd agree with you. And it's also, it, it's just, I think, I think another part of the the issue with the movie is when you base something off of a creepypasta, especially when it's kind of a well-known creepypasta, there's a certain mm-hmm. expectation as to where you're expecting it to go, To a, if you know what I mean. And it's just that you never really get there. Like, you're expecting this kind of... I'll catch you later, Bill. Um, you're expecting this kind of visceral ending to everything that's happened and it never really gets to that level at all yeah and you are kind of getting geared even though the conversations are a little bit boring at times you are kind of getting geared to this you know you're watching people ramp up the gears as the days are going on so you're expecting it to go that way and then it's just like oh he beat him to death and bit some of his face okay right Right. did we see that no 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 the cops said all right Great. Well, we do see when the extraction team goes in, we do see the big dude kind of chomping into the neck of someone. But it's very—I don't know why the hell they turned—they left all the lights on and then they go in with flashlights to see the lads are still awake. Lights should go on immediately to see where the psychopaths are. Yeah, one hundred percent. And once you saw that they were still awake, backpedal. You know what? Yeah, this is not, absolutely. <laughs> let's let's this just not, wait. Re- this rethink is not the situation. Not regardless. even backpedal. Mm-hmm. Just be like, hey guys, start shooting these. Go in a dark room with a bunch of crazies. Right. See what happens. Um, right. We're going to hit the trailer for the sleep experiment. Uh, we'll be back to do our votes. And then we have a little surprise for you after that. Well, it's not a surprise. It's in the title. It's an interview with James Colin Bresic. We'll be back in a moment. Congratulations. You have been accepted to take part in the sleep experiment. With the following requirements, all charges currently held against you will be dropped and you will be automatically released from your prison sentence. You must stay awake for the next 30 days. You must complete all physical activities. We will be testing an experimental gas that will be administered to you to prevent you from falling asleep. There we go. That's the end of that. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's the trailer for the sleep experiment. Votes, anybody? Um, I liked the ending. Three. I'm going to give it a good solid six because I, it, dude, I honestly, if it went the way that I thought it was going to go based on the trailer, then it was getting a two or a three. But it's. It was it was entertaining enough for me. I thought you know, I give I give it a four. Looked good. Acting was good. It's not the worst thing I've seen. I did watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies a few weeks ago. <laughs> Still so. You're fine. Some things, some things <laughs> leave scars. I give it a four. My mind is a wondrous um, thing. At times. I, I I'm going to uh, start with seven. And then, because the, the seven is the sound design and everything in it's great. Everything sounds awesome. All the guys' audio and everything sounds silky smooth. The cinematography and it's really good. There's some nice shots and they do help you feel quite claustrophobic in that room in the way they shoot a lot of the conversational angles. They're all very, very tight or very tight shot one to one shots or um, real tight two person shots. Um, 
there's no there's no soundtrack uh, or even a score for as much but i think that that's actually in credit to the movie um yeah. it it helps you feel that you're locked in just this room with the guys so that gets it a seven unfortunately i'm taking one off because it it, the story just kind of starts good and then just hits this plateau where it just continues on that constant level for the bulk of the movie until you get to the thing at the end. Um, I took a little bit off as well just because I there was potential for this to be a lot better storyline-wise. I mean, the source material you were using, I, I think you could have gone a little bit bigger on the ending. To be honest, um, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a. F f what did I say? Seven. I took off two. Yeah. So say five. Give it a five. It's just middle of the road. It looks really good. The story is okay. It's just it meanders along a little bit. Like I'll, I'll put it this way: it's the type of movie that, even though it's really serious and it looks like it's got a real in-depth plot, you could put this on. And be chatting away in a room full of people and not particularly lose track of what's going on. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give it a five. Just moved up three, four, five, six. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just middle of the road. Three, four, five, six, 11, 12. So that 12, is a 4.5 from the Gorecast Boys for um, Sleep Experiment. Anybody have any uh, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was my, I mean, like, that was my final thought. Uh, it's in my one and done pile. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I will say, not like, because I know we, three of us have kind of like marginally shat on the movie uh, for a good <laughs> bit of the review. But um, as a one and done movie, it's. I, I would say it, you wouldn't be like overtly disappointed if you watched it, Jimmy, but I, I wouldn't. I, I would recommend watching it maybe one time. I'll put it that way. Do you know, as middle of the road movies go, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the bar is it's not bodies, bodies, bodies. So that's already. Is that the new bar now? Because then, this, this is, if that's the measuring stick, this four. is a 10 or possibly an 11. I think, yeah. I think, I think for, I think he's probably setting that as the low bar. Yeah. Yeah. Then that still would be. This would make that a ten or an eleven. Um. Right. Okay. As was mentioned earlier, we sat down. The next movie we have coming up is oh, Murder God. Anyone, um, which is done by uh, director James Cullen Bresick. We've covered a couple of his movies on here before. Um, we've had him. We've had him on before for a movie he did called Bethany, and we also covered, um. His recent movie, which the name eludes me, but it had Bruce Willis and Zach Ward in it. It was the action movie. It was great fun. Oh. Yeah. The name's gone Speak out of my head. Speak a little bit. Yeah. Speak a little bit. I'll find it. Yes. Um, it, it was an action movie where Bruce Willis was in it as a, a stoic, captured CIA agent. And um, a, another gentleman whose name eludes me um, had to go and survive the, the game. game. Survive the game. There That's it. Go. Yeah. And then uh, Zach Ward was a badass, which was cool because you don't usually get to see Zach Ward be a badass. Well, be a bad guy. It's got Chad Michael Murray. It's got Chad Michael. He's the guy that goes and has does all the badassery against um, against uh, Zach Ward and the other guy whose name I can't remember, who's the head of the organization that Zach Ward works for. It's his brother. I remember that. And the Harlequin oh. Jack. And the Harlequin Jack, yes. Who we all loved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Zach Ward was a little bit jokerish as well, but without the, you know. Nicky Jean. Do you know how I got these scars? We didn't have that kind of it, but he had the, I, I like destroying and blowing up things. Woo wee. Side of the Joker. <laughs> and I remember Bruce Willis was just didn't feel like dealing with people's shit in that movie. He just kind of sat around. and. Yeah. Well, also, that would apparently have been due to the medical issues that Bruce Willis had. So yeah, that's understandable. Uh, it's, why, it's why I used the word stoic at the, yeah. that was my polite way. That was so, a fun movie. I remember it. It's yeah. Good. Um, right. So we're gonna chuck you over to the interview really quick, and then we will be back with an interview. Uh, not an interview. We will be back from an interview with a review of the movie called Murder Anyone. See you in a moment. 
Okay, we'll... Uh, okay. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? And we're back from the trailer, and we're now on the live show, but we're not live anymore because we have sat down to do a pre-recorded interview about the movie we're going to be talking about next, which is Murder, Anyone? <laughs> By the one and only James Cullen Bresick. Uh, thank you for coming over to the show. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. We're... Such a good that movie. Was, it was a good laugh. Oh, so good. It. I have to say, the movie, it, it's a beautiful um, virtually tutorial on how you can do a complete meta movie while staying <laughs> completely meta the entire way through, um, which is hard to do, but executed fantastically in it. Um. Did you find did you find it hard to make all of that align properly storyline wise? You know, uh, it's, such beautiful work was done by my dad in the in the script writing process and stuff. And you know, part of uh, part of my journey in making this movie is I had seen the play that he had put on, like he had written it and directed the play. And so I, you know, I kind of followed what I remembered of what he did and then put my own spin on it, um, <laughs> but still preserving his uh his his words and his his style and legacy and and you know that was like the main goal with this was to you know be able to um to you know honor his his words and and i thought what better project to do it on than this because <laughs> one of the last creative endeavors he did was he wrote and directed this play which came from when I kept saying to him, hey, dad, why are you spending all your time writing plays when you could be writing movies? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, you're, you're just wasting money doing plays. You could be making money doing movies. And, uh, and he responded by writing this play. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was... Uh, I'll show you. Yeah, I thought that was uh, funny. And so I was like, what better a project to uh, honor him with? So you're, you're kind of the... Um... The secondary character in the movie to a certain degree well no no no, no the, he'd be the, the secondary one. character was played by charlie howell who was his real life writing partner and the character was called charlie oh okay uh, so you know i would i would say like i might have been the colonel that started the idea but that character was modeled after charlie okay gotcha 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 Yeah, yeah, like uh, no, no, no. Okay. I was hoping someone else to jump in. Okay, I say, well, I, I was say, yeah, obviously, it's it's a labor of love because you were dedicating it to your father. So, like, how does it feel to to see this, you know, come out to people now, and, and for people to see it? You know, it's been a really interesting experience. Like, you know, we did the film festival circuit and we won a good amount of awards, and I was super honored to be winning awards uh, for my dad, like best screenplay and stuff. That was like a really special thing to be getting because it's like you know hey you know i was able to like the point of doing this was to honor his work and 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 the fact that he's you know posthumously getting these awards and accolades and good reviews is is you know job well done on my part uh, i i look at it because you know i made this movie for an audience of one hmm. you know i made this for like really like to honor him and and he'll never see it <laughs> but i made it yeah. i made it to be you know his you know for him and and so, you know, um, it's just been really special seeing how many people care about it and, and, and enjoyed the movie. Um, and I mean, <laughs> it's it's been a it's you know, it's it's been an interesting experience. I mean, this is the first time I've ever self financed a movie like I, I financed this myself. I paid for it. And, and um, you know, I uh, I didn't make it with the intention of anybody ever, you know, liking it. I made it just to be off the wall and weird and, and have fun with it because I really just made it the way I thought my dad would have enjoyed it. Um, and <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of, you know, what I went with. And it's very much him and his sense of humor. And, you know, I don't know if you guys uh, stuck around for the mid credit scene, but there is a mid credit scene that also, uh, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it, it definitely it, goes towards... Uh, goes towards was, that was something I was going to bring up. I, I really like yeah, that touch. Here. That yeah. was really touching. Oh, thank you so much. I, it, it also fell back into the staying fantastically meta as well when you were doing the explanation yeah. of... The, well, the, <laughs> you know, well, technically I am the guy, but it, it, it's within this other realm of the, the thing. And I was like, <laughs> holy hell, this is... So, so you um, yeah. how, you don't do lots of comedy normally, do you? 
No, man, uh, I don't. I, I have um, to say the the execution on the cinematography and just the dialogue as well, the, the comedy timing and some of this stuff mm. is oh. fantastically done. Well, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I was raised by a comedy writer, uh, and and I, you know, I was surrounded by comedy my whole life. I almost rebelled against the comedy side of myself <laughs> by making violent horror movies and action movies um, to not do comedy uh, because I didn't want people to uh, say that like, oh, well, he only got work because of his dad. Lo and behold, that's literally all people say anyway. So <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it didn't matter that I did something different, but, uh, you know, I think I'll definitely be doing a lot more comedy. My dad left a lot of comedy scripts behind that he had written. So I think, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see me dive into this again. I, I think it'd be a good idea. You, ha you genuinely support, have a, yeah. a natural affinity for the comedy timing of things like that. Like I, I oh, honestly, yeah. I laugh my ass off at several points during this movie. <laughs> there's a, Thank you. there's an old film called a uh, haunted honeymoon and there's a lot of, it's, it's a film I saw when I was a kid and very much influenced me because of the, the, the way that the, the story is laid out. There's people supposed to be live recording a radio play and at the same time we're getting a visual, like a movie of what they're doing. So I was sitting there watching yeah. it because because you had the scenes going back and forth between the two writers and the film. I was sitting there kind of going, oh, cool. It's like it's similar to that, but totally its own thing, because this time we have we get to see the writing process and because of the way myself and Johnny have done stuff in the past where we've been trying to come up with ideas for promos and things like that it was kind of interesting to be sitting there and kind of seeing almost the same perspective of oh I have this idea yeah that's really cool or we could do it this way instead I don't know about that oh when wait when you describe it that way yeah yeah okay that'll work that'll work and then to see them visually altering stuff in flow of the story so like when I'm um, <laughs> when the neighbor comes in and at first she's a medium no no, no we can't do that and then she's blind and then so and just changing them visually on the <laughs> screen the kind of goofy almost campy slapdash way just it worked and made the film feel like okay it is a comedy but you understand why it's the changes because it's these two guys discussing how best to proceed what they want to do how they're going to bring it in so it just yeah I, it was it's definitely fun to evolve and, and also I got to give it up for my amazing cast on this because many of them had to play the character like that they were cast as like five or six different ways yeah. um, while still preserving yeah, I thought they did a great was. job too maybe they're too, British did you get um yeah. were, did you have any improv actors kind of involved I would have thought that would have gone down really well in that scenario there was only a little tiny bit of improv uh, which was uh, the thing Spencer was saying when he was uh, on the ground um when he's on the ground yeah but everything else is scripted as is um that was my dad's writing but the spencer on the ground uh that was there was a little improv there <laughs> so my my favorite line i'll get to it now then i wrote it down as soon as, soon as i heard it, i'm like i'm writing it down and i want to say how brilliant it was was everyone gets fucked in hollywood the only thing you negotiate is how much lube <laughs> Genius. <laughs> and just when he does the Genius. fingers like that, it was just... It, we said yeah. the was just like... <laughs> <laughs> talking about lubricant as much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that, was, that, that was not only a quote in the movie, but that was, uh, that was a quote that my dad said all the, uh, all the time. Oh. He had a lot of uh, Hollywood quotes. He, he, he would say that uh, that one, uh, for instance, and then he would also always say, um, the highest form of sincerity is a check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, myself and your dad would have got along, James, I think. Because <laughs> he's like, Any anybody who says, oh, I'd love to work with you. Yeah, everybody will say that, but where's the check? <laughs> yeah. Prove it. Yeah, when I heard that line, I was just like, oh, my God, I had to write it down. Because I was just like, I don't know why that stood out to me at that time of the movie. I was just like, hilarious. great, brilliant. There, there was a couple other well, really good ones as well. And I just for the, There was one or two other ones. And just for the life of me, I can't remember them like now. Which is well, good, because people should thing, probably watch the movie to hear the lines right. themselves. The thing about the movie is, you know, it's uh, it's very much about the battle, you know, artists have within themselves about whether or not to sell out and do something that's commercial or stick to their guns That's that and, and do something that's like, you know, art and the battle within ourselves of like, well, you know, do we want to have a career doing this or do we want to do art? And, uh, and, and finding that balance and, and how hard it is to truly find that balance because like eventually, you know, you lose sight of what you were even trying to do. Um, and so I, I, I think that was, uh, 
very masterfully written by my dad in there I, in a very silly way. Yeah, it's it's a hard <clears throat> thing to do because it's you, you're taking something that you love and you're trying to turn it into a job essentially. And when you try to do, it's very hard to keep it both ways <laughs> all the time. Do you know what I mean? That I love it and it's a job. Sometimes it's it's got it's gonna have to be a job, <laughs> and I just gotta <laughs> do what you know. I it, it totally get it one hundred percent. For sure, which it's it's a hard experience too, because like especially like with writing, you know what I mean? Like because in writing, people will give you notes, you know, and you'll be like, "Well, why don't you just leave me, me do what I want to like, do?" You're like, no, 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 it's better this way. Like it's better this way. But then you also realize like it's it's weird because it's like, well, they're paying for it, so in their minds, they're just like, "Why are you not just doing the note that I gave you?" No. Like. You know what I mean? It's like in your mind, I have you like a I have like a three strike rule with it where it's like I'll I'll be like I, okay I get what you're saying but the the reason I'm doing looking to do it this way is because down the road this is what I'm hoping to happen or whatever and I'll try that two times and on the third time if it doesn't work I'm just like okay we'll just swap it over that's fine <laughs> no problem <laughs> yeah you know for sure it's a it's a very interesting uh, balance that we all have to take in this business um and uh you know it's uh it's i think that's kind of a lot of what this movie dives into as well um you know i mean they say that the giraffe was the only uh, animal uh formed by committee <laughs> i thought that was the duck billed platypus <laughs> <laughs> nah because it's the it's the giraffe because they're like oh yeah well uh I like it, but why doesn't it have a long neck? <laughs> and somebody else is like, ooh, give it some horns. <laughs> Not too pointy, though, because I don't want anyone to get hurt by them. So if we could have them. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 that's, yeah. Why they're up so, that's why they're up so high, because there's no way that anyone can get up there. You know, they're on top of the head. Yeah. <laughs> so how I was looking was for a horse, for but with a 50 fit. Sorry, go, sorry, Carter. I was just saying, how long was filming for this? You know, it was a shorter shoot, uh, specifically just because if you if you look at it like there's so many long scenes because right. it was a play you know so we it, it was a it was a short breezy shoot for sure i know uh you were mentioning some of the um people that uh carla collins who was in the original play i noticed and then yes, you also had um trying to read my notes there you go charles howell um those are all like friends of your dad and stuff like that so yeah charles howell was uh was my dad's writing partner yeah he actually knew he knew my dad longer than I did. Um, <laughs> How was it like to have them then, on board since, you know, they kind of... It was, I mean, it was really special. I mean, having Carla there, it was great because she had another inside scoop on how my dad directed and did the play. I mean, she, she was in it for a few months. Um, and then uh, and then my uh, my dad's, you know, best friend, Maurice LaMarche, uh, played the character that was based on my dad. Uh, and Maurice does amazing impressions. Uh, so it was interesting seeing somebody doing an impression of my father. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, glad you actually brought that up because I was going to say you have to pass on my um, salutations of greatness. On he does an amazing Jack Nicholson. He, he does, does an he amazing does. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I I because I, I I had turned away from my desk at one stage and I just heard the Jack Nicholson voice. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, I mean, he was also the voice of the brain in Pinky and the Brain, yeah. and he's the voice of, you know, Calculon on uh, on Futurama and, and Morbo, and, and I mean, he's he's the voice of everything. I am much. Calculon. <laughs> Such a good character. That's good. I miss Futurama. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was there, like, any really big differences from, like, the play from the, in the movie form? Like, do you add a lot, or... Uh, you know, well, the mid credit scene was added. Um, okay. You know, uh, that wasn't in the play because, you know, that that wouldn't have been something he would have written. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine the intermission <laughs> yeah, was probably uh, part of the original play. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, the other thing is, is like um, the st uh, stunt doubles thing. It was different in the play. That was instead of stunt doubles, they used like wires and like people in black oh. like, holding everybody up. It was done in slow motion, like very different than the. Oh, I love thing. that! So that I love that. Translating to the movie, it became different. That that's that's one that of the I, that fight scene. Oh, dude, that was awesome. very Mortal oh. Kombat. It was totally Mortal Kombat. That that is like a Mortal Kombat, definitely Mortal Kombat inspired tune. 
playing during it. Yes, inspired, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely inspired. Um, well, I suppose we're going to have to let you go, James, from the looks of the timing, I think. Ah, uh, I was having so much fun. Well, Thank we can, you get, you, so we can get you back on some other time, fun. dude. It's been great to have you back yes, on. Definitely. Um As we're going to be reviewing the movie after this finishes, but in advance, because I'm sure you've gathered that we enjoyed it, go out, rent, or buy the movie. Murder anyone? It's goddamn an entertaining Murder afternoon sitting anyone? in. <laughs> and tell your friends. Spread tell the word. Yes. Yes. Oh, there will be a share button on this interview. Share it. Spread the word. Let people know of the movie and its greatness. Anyway, we're going to see you back over in the main studio. James, again, thank you very much for joining us. And um, I hope the movie strives on to even more greatness thank than what it's destined to be. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for such kind words on the film. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Oh, it was a good laugh, man. It was a good laugh. Take care, man. <laughs> there we go. That was our interview with Mr. Bresic about uh, the movie we're about to review, which I need to get a poster for because that's still the sleep Weird. experiment. We're wearing the same clothes as we were in the interview because that happened not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I which, guess I didn't think so. Which Buzz but... forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Buzz thought yeah, I did a costume out... change in the middle of the night. That didn't yeah, happen. She came, out, she came out a while ago. Wait, Johnny, you wearing the same t-shirt you wore for the day too? Yes. I was literally <laughs> sitting here the entire time. <laughs> I was just so dedicated to the interview that I just didn't realize you guys had clothes on. So. What? Alrighty. I was laser focused. I... I was laser focused at my notes and I couldn't read. All right. Was... Apologies about some uh, minor editing happening here on the movie poster, but. I thought you were apologizing for Buzz. No, never. He's not apologizing for me. <laughs> I don't take responsibility for Buzz. Everybody knows that. It's a lost cause very, by now. Very wise choice. Wait, you don't take responsibility for me either, do you? No. No. Very, very wise choice. I stopped around season two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you last. That explains, that explains why the show. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Something talking while he's doing things, trying to have. Some oh, you can stuff. talk normally. Yeah. Well, how did you guys like the interview in the chat? Let's did you guys enjoy the, the interview? Did you learn things? I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy? Did you actually enjoy the pre-recorded side of the interview? Because one of the reasons we don't have people on, or it has bit us in the bum in having people on sometimes, is due to time zone differences. Yeah. And when our show Can't goes really. out compared to when other shows go out. So if you guys enjoyed the pre-recorded uh, version, there is a lot more opportunity for more interviews. I like it. It's, I mean, we're still able to do our still our stuff and I just don't care what you think bonuses. Buzz I'm talking to the crowd <laughs> oh, the crowd cares what I care about right crowd it, that's been blatantly oh, proven not to be true ever see uh, I, I just heard the crowd saying no you didn't hear anything because they would be typing there's no they're not verbal it's you can't I, hear you can see you know, them you know, saying funnily no. enough just like sometimes when I'm reading a book and it's almost like I can hear the voice of the characters in my head it's just like Randy that. Orton I hear no. voices in my head. RKO. Randy hears the voices of go wrestle, make money. I can't. He's got boo boos. He uh, up, go wrestle, down? make money. I think he's made enough monies from the all the wrestles. He can take a break. And he's done he's some wrestling. marine movies. He did do yeah, one. He did. Then the Miz took over, did all the others. Yeah. That is a thing too. John Cena did the first one, didn't he? He did. Yeah. I couldn't see it, but. I'm just... <laughs> but... Oh, I. That's so that's, funny. I hope. Never, never I hope someone old. doesn't rip that joke off and use it. <laughs> you mean like John Cena? Bee, 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 bee. Did you see that uh, that um, clip I put in the Gorecast general chat of the John Cena phone Bruh. call? Oh my god, yes. that phone call it's was so awesome. funny. When they, when they ring back as the military. <laughs> so good, you're one just be like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> we need you to help support the American military by supporting one of their own. John Cena, this Sunday night at the WrestleDome. 
You know, when she answers the phone, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Bear in mind this prank phone call. Oh, he'd rang staff. her. This is about the fifth time he'd rang her, and it was all different John Zena stuff every time. <laughs> we don't want this in our house. Just stop calling me. She should start doing what I do whenever I think I get a crank call. Gives us I don't answer the phone anymore. Gives us taxidermy. You snuff him, we stuff him. Oh no. Yeah, I can just go back the route. And don't answer. Anyway, I like. I have voicemail for a reason. Murder anyone is a movie I didn't even try and segue I was just like fuck it uh, Murder Anyone is a movie as I said directed by James Cullen Bresick it's based off of a stage play um, done by his father about it came out in 2017 yeah, I think yeah about two writers oh. one very much wanting to adapt and go to um, making actual movie movies instead of plays because you know it's god damn it it's going to be we'll actually make some money with our fucking scripts instead of doing these goddamn plays where we make no more money and the other the other guy's a purist he wants to stick with the art i'm about the art of the writing and the enjoyment of seeing it unfold and also mostly about the art of not having someone's hand up my fucking ass telling me <laughs> eh, can we change that i was wondering can we do can, can, i was wondering can we move it to camera angle number two i know it was designed to be on camera angle number one but i was, I was wondering can you move the number two i don't like the guy's denim shirt can we change the color of his denim shirt i was wondering can i get myself down as a producer on the thing because i'm giving you some money you know, some... stage play where i just go and direct Understandable, so understandable, but one sounds like someone's one talking is, from experience over here. And what you see unfold is the fantastic duality between two writers with two different intentions behind a fucking screenplay. <laughs> um, unfold live action in front of you. Like at one stage, there's one of the main characters who comes in, and they're kind of like, I think he should be a little bit younger. And as you're watching stuff unfold, he literally just goes, and he's a younger dude. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things like it, it, it's, it's very entertaining the way the movie's done, and the story. The story unfolding is that of them just designing this stage play. A stage play involving mystery, intrigue, murder. And Bam cameras, if one writer has his way. Cam cameras, importantly. Yes, uh, lighting, stage rigs. Uh, we're going to need a dolly shot. Do we have stuntmen? Stuntmen, what the fuck do you need the stuntmen for? For the fight scene. Fight scene? And what where fucking fight scene? Where the fuck did the guy with the chicken suit come from? We needed some action. <laughs> Funnily enough, the guy with the chicken suit was written in by the guy who was looking to keep the stage play going. <laughs> oh, it was the other dude. Oh, was it him that I did? Oh, sorry, I thought it was the... All right, okay. Um, yeah, that fight scene. There, there was there was literally a moment where I swear to the gods, you, I was sitting there kind you of You didn't like, let me keep doing my movie headline. I got interrupted. Mystery, intrigue, murder, vampires, zombies, ninjas. Uh, a, a nice little sprinkle of... The salt and pepper known as the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. <laughs> and did I mention murder? Anyone? There you go. That's the point. Like, we can go back into the story. I was going to say, there was literally a moment where where it was, it was like looking at a backwards facing mirror in a way because one guy's typing and the other guy's leaning over his shoulder going, what the fuck are you doing? And I just had a flashback of like stuff of me and you and you, I suggest something you're like, so like no, you fucking maniac. We can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that literally happens. <laughs> I was say, I did have a little bit of reminiscences of... That is a fantastic idea, but we don't have this, 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 or this, do we? There's never a this, 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 or this. It's normally budget. <laughs> yeah. I like your idea. Kind of. Maybe. Okay. I probably don't like your idea, but the reason I'm not even <laughs> acknowledging it as an idea right now is because we do not have the money. <laughs> or the people. To make that happen, or the money to pay the people to show up to make it happen, one or the other, whatever way you want to. Or the money it. for the lawsuit that might come as a result. There's, there's that too. I, I, you and I, I was actually only discussing this at work today because we're uh, doing a line of. Oh yeah, I can't. Hey, journals. We're doing a, we're doing a line of some sort of. Uh, what's the best way of putting this? Uh, we're something. We're doing a line of uh, name redacted um, artwork. <laughs> For a company called Name Redacted, about a famous name redacted. Um, but my ability to walk on the fine line that is sat here, I was like, "Oh, don't worry, I, I've I've had years of experience of tiptoeing on the 
Okay, we need to satirically uh, satiricalize satire this up a little bit more so we don't get fucking sued. <laughs> Too close to reality. We need to add an alien. We're going to need some fucking. Uh, could we put it like a fucking dancing donkey in the background, maybe, or something? Just we just need some. Why well, can't we do it this way? Because Giz, we will get sued. Yeah, we will get sued. There's a reason I'm keeping it entertainingly vague, so I don't get sued. Uh, Except for you, grudgery you make. You literally made me fall asleep, and I have no problem saying that live on camera. <laughs> I didn't watch it, so but I'm pretty sure. I don't you fall asleep. asleep? Hey, journal, sir, you welcome in. I know both someone else us. said that already, but I was in the middle of a. Hey, journals. Uh, both of us in the same room at the same time, fucking unconscious. Yeah. We actually yeah. both fell asleep in my office chairs, which were not comfortable at the time. Oh, I'm sure that movie got a bad <laughs> review. The entire yeah. trailer we wrote was the trailer we made for American Horrors was us unconscious in chairs because it was like, I actually can't even think of something that happened in the movie to make a trailer out of. I think, I think the joke was like one of us waking up because an alarm went off or something. Uh, no, we heard the credits. That was it. We heard the credits. Yeah, it was... Um... I was watching another interview. We're having a good Jim one tonight, Journal. Thanks for asking. Yeah, it's good. Um, about the movie was like, I guess like when his his dad had passed, he told him, you know, don't let you know my screenplays, you know, pretty much die with me. So like he had a la a computer just filled with like a bunch of screenplays, and James said like he he like wouldn't touch it for a couple of years because obviously it's too too hard, too much, and he just didn't want to deal with it at the time. And he said he went in there and like the first one that was there was murder anyone. And that's when um, that's when he went with. For, I love the idea the that he just starts at the top of the list and just works his way down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that was right at the top, but it was. he said it, sounded I, like it was one of the first ones that kind of. I was going to say the fact jumped that out it, at him. The fact that it is this one and it's so meta, mm -hmm. you know, the, the entire the entire principle that we get to see these people coming up with the story and that it's so entertaining the way that it's done, because a lot of the humor now that I think back on it, that, that when we were talking during the interview and I was saying there was a lot of lines that I couldn't remember that had me laughing, a lot of that humour was derived from the two writers going back and forth with their ideas. You know, one of them would come up with something, the other one was looking over his shoulder and go, what the fuck are you doing? You know, yeah. or the, the other one comes up with a notion, he's like, ah, don't be stupid, we can't do that. Also, the, di really the dynamic between the two writers, I, I did, they do know each other um, mm, anyway, yeah. but the, you can tell that they know each other. It, it's such a natural bounce chemistry. back and forth between each yeah. other with the way the conversations unfold yeah. even though that like even though it's scripted it's you can tell it's a load of people wrote a script that a load of people that about no who, who know each other if you know what i mean because yeah. it, it's so fluid and natural and like as giz said like not to harp back on it but it is it, like it's why i've kind of picked up on how natural everything felt because it literally felt like watching giz and i having a script writing session about one of the things is just this fucking giving each other fucking shit kind of thing, but yeah. like, you know, it's really funny, really good. Yeah, it was cool because like it, you, it definitely like I was saying in the interview, like you tell it was definitely a passion project for him. He, <coughs> he he got a lot of people that was like involved in his dad's life and uh, who actually was in the original play yeah. uh, to be a part of it. So it was really cool to that he was able to bring like familiar people to the story to everything about it as opposed to just i mean i'm not saying it wouldn't have played off as well if it was just random actors that he hired but it definitely made it work that it was almost the people that the story was based on and it also pretty in, much also in credit in, in credit to james's um visual storytelling style in relation to this it it's very smart the way some of the shots are done. Like when, oh, when yeah. the when the playwright guy is talking, everything is kind of on a very front facing, as if you're sitting there watching a stage. And then when it's the guy who's trying to write the movie screenplay is doing it, that's when you get these action scenes and they have multiple shots and things like that and everything. And it's it's a really um, obvious but yet subtle way of letting you see each person's conversation through their eyes, yeah. or. Uh, visualization through their eyes or whatever way you want to put There's it. There's also a slight shift in the way that um, once again, d the exact way that you were saying it, there's the, the, you know, the movie guy has all the action scenes. There's also a slight shift in the way that the characters deliver their dialogue, the, the, the dialogue that they're writing. 
you know, the, the presentation for the movie guy seems almost TV movie of the week. Whereas when the script, whereas when the playwright guy is doing it, it seems well, he's, like... T- he's writing um, an exploitation movie. That's what he, his aim of the game is. Yeah. Whereas when the other guy is doing it, the, the performers are delivering their lines a little bit more... Shakespearean. Yeah, the stage like Shakespearean, I guess, is the best way. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's... That's, that's what I love about this movie is like, there's so many subtle little things throughout that show you that switch over between everything. And that was one of the things that I was actually going to ask him before we ran out of time was like, what kind of like, what inspirations did he get for that? Like that style, like what, like how he set up a lot of the, like what went behind the idea to do it like that. I mean, it's, I would say it's obvious, but like, like, I just love, like you said, just love how like they just, every shot fit the person telling the story. It was different. When they would go from guy, when each well, guy was kind of be, given their thing, you'd be reading the stage directions because, as like as you said, they're all adapted from stage plays by his dad, or it is adapted from a stage play by his dad. So the yeah. the, the stage play script directions are much different to uh, like a movie script, like you would have seen me write for you guys. Yeah. So presumably, d- no, I don't know. It, could, it actually would have been a fantastic question if we thought about that when we were uh, when yeah. we were on air, but um, or when we were Tight. on with him. But uh, yeah, I, I would assume that it's probably him being a really good movie director and seeing the way it was yeah. laid out on stage. And for play. somebody who said, like in the interview, who said he doesn't naturally really do comedy stuff, he he's mostly. He, I the reason I said it was because it's true. Like he's mostly yeah. horror and um, right. action movies. But, but this is something that um, I don't know if we've discussed on the show before. But myself and Johnny have talked about it before. The timing required to do good horror is virtually identical to the timing required to do good comedy because it's all set up and lead and then the delivery of the punchline or the kill or whatever at the appropriate moment and in the right way. I think it's why comedy and horror work so so uh, seamlessly together as well as a, a genre blend. And it's often why I'm so annoyed when we see horror movies that could do with elements of levity because it wouldn't take much to put them in there, especially, like I said, considering that the timing and everything else if you're getting one thing right you're going to be able to get the other thing right and it, it definitely because mm. of like with it it's too different this. it's still salt and pepper if you know what i mean true but you're shaking them the same way yeah and well, you, also, you can do too much of what you know what i mean <laughs> there while, while very similar in the setups the it's different still I, I, yeah but it and I mentioned too with his dad, <clears throat> dad being kind of like a comedy guy majority of his life. So it's like, I'm sure he probably definitely took some, some stuff from that, you know, being around his dad all and and stuff like that. Obviously, he's got to do it his own way, but like I'm sure he definitely had the influence and in, of like seeing his dad doing it for for all those years, because like I don't know the people in the the chat don't know like his dad was the writer on Pinky and the Brain and Maniacs, uh, a ton of ton of comedy. Uh, stuff, one of the guys so in the movie is the voice of Brain on Animaniacs. Yeah, yeah. Um, the so guy who plays his dad, I, I, isn't it? Yeah, he's the one. His the dad is the screenplay the writer. That, yes, he was the one that wanted it to be a mo- the movie. No, his dad is the one that wanted it to be a play. Yeah, well, the, guy the, play, yeah the guy who played. Yeah, the guy who was thinking the brain is the guy doing the. Yeah, he pretty much plays himself. Yeah, the guy who voiced brain and Pinky the brain is the one that wanted everything to be a movie um <clears throat> but yeah I, I i really liked it it was it was really oh i don't know i saw you <laughs> oh no sorry that has nothing to do with you okay um i i really enjoyed it um yeah, yeah i don't know where i was going i got sidetracked i dug the cast um... so we some of them have done other stuff, like other movies, stuff like that. But I don't know. We talk about the chemistry between the two writers, but I don't know. It's also like in the cast, the rest of them too, just the way they play off each other. Like it almost seemed like this was going to be one of those like fun sets to be a part of, and just how everybody flowed and got along and stuff. Yeah, you could definitely tell. Like it was, it was easier with the like. Obviously, you could tell with the two. The, the the writers you can definitely tell the chemistry there but yeah the cast really seemed like they they were able to 
uh, feed off each other really well. Yeah. <clears throat> I just realized, do you remember, um, do you remember that PS4 game, the, the kind of live action movie walkthrough thing? Oh, uh, the, the thing with the chick? Was that called Until Dawn? Oh, the one that I was doing on Twitch? PS4, you had me down at the house playing it with you one night. No, Until Dawn is the one that I was streaming on Twitch. Huh. Different, it's very Breaking Bad. Well, um, the... Ah, oh, crap. Bridget, the actress that plays Bridget, huh. is one of the leads in that. All right. What, what? In Until Dawn. Uh, she's Ashley in the PS4 Smash It video game Until Dawn. Oh, she, oh, that's the... Okay. She also played the live-action version of Gwen Tennyson in the Ben 10 film and was Cassidy in the middle. She's been in a bunch of stuff, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Well, the dude in Chicken Suit's also a child actor that's grown up doing a bunch of stuff. He was in Santa Claus 2 and 3, yeah. I think. That's what I remember him from. Mm hmm Santa Claus is Tim Allen who flashes people. Right. So, anyway, we'll... we'll um... We'll start moving into the trailer. Anyone interested in seeing this? It's out on digital release on February 7th um, from Uncorked Entertainment. Um, no news on streaming as of yet. Is there? No. It's, it will release digital uh, February 7th. So check out Uncorked Entertainment's um, page next month, uh, which is also a, a pretty good stamp of approval, the fact it's Uncorked. Yes. That's it. So we're going to hit the trailer for um, Murder Anyone so you can actually see what the hell we're on about. And then we'll be back to do some ratings and talk about some crazy laws from around America. Maybe. Mo <laughs> mostly America. Uh, mostly. Pres presumably. Probably America. Back in a minute. <laughs> well, cheers. The chicken costume was a last minute decision. I was going to go as Freddy Krueger. <sighs> I've gone as old Freddy for every costume party and Halloween outing since I was nine. <sighs> well, it's a very good chicken costume. And it suits you. Mm-hmm. It does, sort of. <laughs> How so, would you say? Well, you see, I've got a dreadful heart condition, any severe shock, and I could drop dead right here. So naturally, I'm timid of things like Horror films and violence, you know. But you dress like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> well, if I dress like the scary thing, I'm not likely to get scared now, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Look, I... We're actually, we're going to pop back here for a minute because that's a, that's <laughs> a, a sneak peek clip instead of the trailer. Wish the sneak peek clip does give you a good feel for the movie, but I want you to see the trailer because the trailer is impeccably well done. It gives you a broader. It gives, yes, very, very well put. More. I don't think I've actually seen the trailer before. I just kind of grabbed. The, I think uh, Johnny and I watched it when, when, we, when we we did the other night. Yeah, when you left, we stayed after school detention. Detention. <clears throat> I'll tell you what we could do. We could do our ratings while we um, while we wait for this to download. I give it an eight. Nine. Yeah, I'm going with an eight as well. Absolutely. Like, it was, it's funny. It's definitely, like, you can definitely tell that it's, like, it's made, it's, it's made with love. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Hearing the story behind it and like how like it all came to be, like it's I don't know. I really liked it. Eight. I'm gonna eight, give it. Eight. I'm gonna give it a nine with Carter. Uh, the the comedy timing in it is so fantastically well done. I, I literally couldn't find a fault in it at all. Um, yeah. As I said earlier, the, the the way they managed to kind of give you a feel for screenplay when they're talking about the screenplay and give you a feel for stage play when they're talking about the sp stage play is really well done and adds to the movie everyone's acting and it's brilliant the comedy's off the wall zany and the two guys that play the writers are absolutely fantastic so that's a nine for me 
Does anyone else have any points they want to say before? Um, no, yeah. overall, I enjoyed the film. Um, I liked the, the banter back and forth and stuff between the two writers. Like I said, I think that's where some of the best comedic lines came from for me. Possibly, like I said, because it was so reminiscent of basically me and you working on the show. Um, I liked a lot of the stuff that they did visually with the transitions. Like I said, like I was saying during the interview, how as the writers are changing stuff, we visually see it. Um, yeah, it was just, it was overall, it was it was fun. It was good. I liked it. I, yeah. You can definitely tell, like, with the banter between the two, that, like, it's, like, it's it's kind of, it's real. Like, it's obviously dialogue, written dialogue, but, like, you could tell that it's something that they may have actually, since they've known each other, like, they may have actually done at some point, maybe. Mm. Um, but you could definitely, to me, I could definitely tell that, like, there was realness behind behind the dialogue and, and, and the uh, interactions. And I got to say, because, uh, and I only throw this out there because, you know, sometimes we turn it off and we think the movie's over. There's a post credit scene that you should stick around for. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> it's cool. Really? Actually, another re- uh, that was another reason I wanted to give points to the movie was it, this, it, this movie is meta as fuck from the start, literally from the start of the movie right up until the after credit scene. The the landslide of meta-ness and the way this is put together ceases to halt at all, which is hard to do without it being tacky a lot of the time. And right. this, the, the meta nearly was inherently as much of a character in the plot as any one of the actors. And I think it's amazing the way that all played out. Like I really loved, I, I like a bit of meta humor in a while, but I've never so- seen something been an hour and a half start to finish meta as fuck and this was meta as fuck and I loved it and, and done right and it'd too. be good like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah sometimes they try to do that and it just like it's so obvious to where it's like or just falls flat and you're just like yeah that didn't work this like worked 100% right we actually have the murder anyone trailer lined up now properly opposed to the um, sneak peek so we'll be back in a minute No matter how secure you are, how safe you feel, danger could be right at your shoulder. Are you going to write any of this? I wrote plenty. Plenty? You wrote Act One. Okay, okay. Richard enters. He's a pleasant looking chap with a perpetual grin. He's dressed in tennis clothes. Murder? Anyone? Isn't it a little early in the play to show that Richard's a psycho killer? Whoa! It does take a bit of the pressure off, doesn't it? Wait a second, what is that? Someone in a chicken costume? Why is it someone in a chicken costume? This is where we reveal that something is going on that the audience didn't realize. There's something going on that I didn't realize. You'd like to murder me, Blaine? We can't have a psychic. I am Mary Clemens. I am blind. I've been summoned. By whom? The dead. This play could be our meal ticket. Let's go, Cooper! This is the final straw. Murder? Anyone? Kung Fu zombies and Marilyn Monroe, and now a vampire? You say that like it's a bad thing. Love it. Love it. That's the reason I specifically was like, oh shit, I don't want to watch the sneak peek. I wanted you to get a full scope yeah. of the madness yeah. that is this movie. Like watching pe- watching the actors just change live in front of you is fucking hilarious. <laughs> really like this. Well, that is an 8.5, by the way, from the Gorecast boys. Um, for Yes, Tristan, you do need to watch it. Definitely need yes. to watch this. You need to watch it. It's very good. February 7th, you'll be able to. Yes. Where's my window capture gun? I don't know. That was terrifying. <laughs> that was terrifying. Anyway, as is customary over in the world of the Gorecast, Buzz, or occasionally evidently Bill, but today Buzz, scoured through the internet to find us some of the weirdest laws from around America. Possibly. America. America, There's possibly, a possibly the world, but... Yeah. Judging by the way these things go, most likely America. Yeah. Um, 
Christ. We keep it weird. We keep it weird. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, I should probably get rid of that rating. Mm. Uh, hey, where'd it go? Why did it be? Where did it, there it is. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Yet again, before we go on as well, February 7th. No. Yeah. February 7th, yeah, for um, Murder Anyone on Court Entertainment. Um, you'll be able to purchase a rent. There. Let me just double check here and make sure that we don't have before we get into this. No. Okay, perfect. Anyway, in Devon, Texas, it is against the law to make furniture while nude. I feel like that's just a safety issue. Uh, I would, I was, you know, won't lie to you. Right there with you. Anyone think... else having visions of bad things happening with bandsaws? Chisel. Yep. chisel. Funny One slip of a chisel and... First place I went. One slip Try of a chisel have... and it's... <laughs> bye bye, my sizzle. Any visuals at all. Yeah, I chisel my sizzle. Yep. Fun isle. Um, next. No, I'm drizzle. In Florida. The nutsack of America, from what we've been taught. <sighs> um, men seen publicly in any kind of stra strapless gown can be fined. But not will be. Yeah. I suppose, Can it, be. I suppose it depends how you're wearing it. Yeah. And how sassy you get with the police officers. God dang. Weird. Even for Florida, weird. In New York, the penalty for jumping off a building is death. <laughs> that's New York just... That's, yeah, that's say, called time efficient be judicial a... systems. <laughs> he survived. They keep oh, it simple. No, didn't. <laughs> In New York City, it is illegal for a restaurant to call a sandwich a cornered beef sandwich, or corned beef sandwich, as I say, if it is made with white bread and mayonnaise. Okay. Illegal. New York, you get some weird laws. What is it supposed to be made with? I have no I, idea. That's like, actually what I was curious about. I understand, the, I understand the man is, but what the what's the problem with white bread? I think there's some, uh That being said, I wouldn't eat corned beef myself personally anyway, but corned beef is good. I don't I have, really like corned beef, but And again I, I wouldn't eat mayonnaise. The only thing I'd eat there is the white bread, so I'm kinda like, what? Alright. I like mayonnaise. Run a TV show called or on a page called Delish, how to make a corned beef sandwich. Hmm. That looks like a mountain of artery clogger. Four tablespoons of butter, softened. Eight slices of rye bread. Okay. One quarter mustard. One quarter cup of mustard. One quarter cup of relish. Deli corned beef and sauerkraut. Mm. That's way more complex than just bread, butter and corned beef. Yeah, I think that's why they're saying it's illegal to call bread, butter and corned beef a corned beef sandwich. They didn't say bread, butter and corned beef. They said bread... Bread, mayonnaise, white bread, mayonnaise, and corned beef. Yep. You can't use white bread or mayonnaise. Yeah. You also can't tell me what to do with the sandwiches. <laughs> they can in yes. New York. It's they the law. If you're in New York. Oh, I'm not in New York. You know what? I've had a corned beef omelet. Kags, if you're in the chat, we really need good. you to clarify the reality of this. In France, it is against the law to sell an E.T. doll. They have a law forbidding the sale of dolls that do not have human faces. Would like to know how that came about. The one time he's not around. They made the E.T. Oh, no, that wasn't the doll. That was like the finger back in the 80s. That pretty much looked like a dildo. Because it was just E.T.'s finger that you were supposed to put Phone at home, E.T. E. Phone yeah. at home. <laughs> E.T.'s dialing my digits. It's like Snow White sitting on Pinocchio screaming and lied to me. Buongiorno. <laughs> <laughs> In Louisiana, biting someone with your natural teeth is considered simple assault, but biting someone with your dentures is aggravated assault. Because mm. presumably you're carrying the weapon opposed to it being part of your person. Would it be in your uh, mouth? Okay. I, lo I love Tristan's approach. Kags, we're playing Fall Guys. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps it's because the dentures could be sharpened. In England, them in. it is illegal to die in the Houses of Parliament. See if you can do anything about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you going to charge You're going to jail for a while, bud. In Los Angeles, California, it is illegal for a waiter to tell a customer, I'm really an actor. That, <laughs> that actually would make sense. That makes a lot of sense. It should yeah, also be illegal for them to go, I've got, I wrote this screenplay. 
Mm, I don't care. <laughs> what I would like you to do is write me down my uh, order that I just gave you and then <laughs> pop it on a plate Tell and bring it over. I want corned beef sandwich on white bread and mayonnaise. This is California, not New York. Roach said that's true about Parliament. I believe it. Uh, all these are true. That's They're the all real. Word. And yeah, then it's not like that's the end of it. Up. Now we're at a screaming man from the movie. <laughs> yeah. Also, my reaction while watching this movie about 40 minutes in. <laughs> That was my reaction about the corned beef sandwich law. Why? I like mayonnaise. That's all I'm gonna no, say. <laughs> Did we start early or something? No. How are I we on we start... for an hour and 42 minutes, but it's only half one? Because I think we started on time. Yeah, I was going to say we started on time instead of... Yeah, if we started on time, then it would be... 142. We, usually, we, usually, well, we also do three movies. And we always sidetrack when we're doing shit. But we had an interview. No, but what yeah, I'm but saying... but it was a hard 20. What I'm saying is the times don't match up. <laughs> and I'm also pretty sure we started after 12 o'clock. It was like oh, 7.03 my time when we started. And it's 8.30, so that's about an hour and a half almost. Yeah, it's saying we're live for an hour and 43 minutes. It's probably one of the shortest Thursday episodes. Because didn't you have the thingy going starting soon for a while before we actually went on? Yes, but that would still completely add up. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's what's going on. Never mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're completely right. Yeah. It's okay. When, when we, talk we didn't, out, we we didn't just we start didn't. on time. We also had started properly on time where we had the thing rolling yeah. for 15 minutes before we went live. Because we've been, I was we've wondering been on... Why... I was sitting there kind of going, why is he not getting this? <laughs> we, I've we been also, working we all day, dude. Argument. We already yeah. started. We started early because we had the interview, so we kind of just sat here, so it was easy to start on Rochi, time. Rochi, would you please explain here. to people the game we were playing tomorrow because it might be something we will do on a Sunday night. Because it was very Ghostbusters fun. Ghostbusters was a five. <laughs> Ghostbusters was a five. I totally agree. <laughs> He needs to come with new material, because that's just, that's old shit. Yeah, but it's true. Uh, He's just spitting facts. Rochi, tell us about the name of the game. Gat, 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 oh, gat, gat, gat. Basically, there's gat one of these gat games gat that, um, I'm wondering, can I play that gif on here? <laughs> there's one of these games on this gat, gat phone thing where you have to make an animation as a team. So it's like everyone everyone starts and everyone draws like the first cell of an animation then it swaps around so you'll have to draw the next cell of somebody else's animation it's let me show you the results of one of these things I, let me let me let me find you the results of one of these things because it's i'm going to tell you guys it's oh, good. it's just it, fall guys working nice hmm. uh let me let me just tell you because uh, it's a thing of beauty i wish i could go by it frame by frame and then show you the uh Where's the movie trailers? Trailer video. We can pop it in here. This is this is a thing of beauty, by the way. Just to let you know. Uh, which one is dog humping a rocket? There we go. <laughs> Just bear in mind, this is not how anyone intended anything to start. By the way. No, that's the wrong one. Where's window capture? There we go. And we need to put on the trailer, which is this. Okay, here we go. Let's just put this up on the big screen. So there was only four of us playing, so it's only like four cells of an animation. <laughs> they get they get dark really fast. <laughs> that is true. There we go. Let you see all the beauty. So it starts off as rocket, then the, it turns into a cocket, and then the dog decides to hump the rocket. No, it starts off as a mm. dog. Yeah. Let's see. I'll show you some other ones. But these are the results. But imagine if we had our usual, like, 9 to 12 people. Where we have 12 frames to fuck around with. Yes, Charlie's down. Charlie already knows what Gatcophone is. Tristan, oh, this fucking game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah, What's this one? Is this the one? With... The Ninjas <laughs> one actually turned out okay. Um, what's this one? Oh yeah, 
interest in this. It stressed me out on a Sunday night. <laughs> it's pooping. Is that a gold Gotham? What the fuck? <laughs> There was a stage where no matter what people drew, I blew it up with a rocket. <laughs> oh. It's good times. Well, yeah, we might do that some Sunday night. We could, Not for the whole night. We'll do like half an hour, get a couple of rounds of it in, and then we'll play some other game. What's this one? I don't know if some of these aren't. <laughs> ah, shut the fuck up, Johnny. Good times. <laughs> that's it. Anyway, that's it from us. Um, I'll be back over tomorrow night. We'll have the later start on Twitch as usual because it's Fem Bam Friday. I think. So, um, no, it's definitely Fan Bam Friday. So, expect all of the Kankle Cranker crew running around causing some mischief with some mad Peggy action. And other than that, we'll be back Sunday night where we're probably going to play some Gatcophone and then do some Fall Guys or Goose Goose Duck. Charlie, while you're here, quick question. Is it you can't play Fall Guys at all? Or you need some notice to play Fall Guys? I'll wait and stare at her phones. <laughs> I think I um, added a nice bit of drama with the lollipop. I did it like a Kojak afterwards. <laughs> so, don't mind telling me, where are you on Sunday around 12.30, 9pm? Lollipop. Nope. Need to find a setup. Okay, cool. Well, it'll be Goose Goose Duck Sunday, so... Works for me. Less chance and some gacka fun. That's my song to sing. Hello? What's this? Facebook. What? Rochi sent me uh, messages. Rochi like. just sent you a DM. Can Johnny read the DM live on air? Is this an actual thing? <clears throat> we don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. How many licks does you're it picking, take? To you're get picking to the a center? fight with a Steiner, bro. Yep, that's pretty much how I expected it to go. That's definitely a real fight. What the what? Who picked the fight with a Steiner? One moment. Physics. Uno momento. God damn. Charity's, apparently, Jack, Charity's Xbox is stored away somewhere since the move. Ah, uh, gotcha. Boo -dee -boo -boo -dee -boo. Tell me, what was it? Was it like a normal person that made that foolish mistake? Or no, it's another... in the fucking. Um, it looks like it's in the NXT training center. Oh, that was uh, what the fuck is his name? Um, the guy that he's going to be wrestling. For. It's. I don't think it's. I think it's staged. They look like they were they're, kicking the tits off each well, other. They're, they're wrestling each other for the title at the next pay per view. I think it was. Uh, what the fuck is his name? Australian Braun. guy, I think. It's Braun Breaker versus... I know that. The guy that he... Something... Way, uh, no. What the fuck is his name? God damn it. Here. Let me know when you're ready. Everybody there? Yeah, I can see it. Grayson Waller. That's who it was. Defending the title against uh, uh, Benjamin Stager. I don't know. Did he say something in a promo that pissed him off? Maybe. Did I from? Because I saw a different. Because he looks like he proper punched. I mean, he may have. I bet uh, maybe not. Him. Actually. I think it's staged. Cause, like I said, they're they've been they've been having a whole bunch of people like 
still in the, uh, they, they Nobody were, actually got hit there. No. There was um there was one like NXT trainer that was there and she was like doing a live stream or something with like yes, people and then is, it like um, This is staged, my friend. Yeah. That happened about I was like two or three days ago, I think. Yeah, no, that's uh that's some for, for some advertising. Yeah. Because he didn't hit him with that first punch and no one was holding him back at that stage. Mm. So, good advertising. I think, it even, I think they even made it onto the show, I think, on NXT, I think. was I think they showed some of it on there. But if they're showing so. it, then it's definitely staged. Unless they're like, ooh, we could make it look like it was staged. and But I think it was staged. I think it's staged. Yeah. We solved the case, guys. Charlie's just like, mmm, muscles. <laughs> A lot of muscles there. Right, we're going to hop off. I'll see you tomorrow night over on Twitch, and then we'll see you Sunday night for some games over here. Uh, catch you later, guys. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>Don't forget, if you enjoy our madcap, gorecast, horror hijinks, we stream three nights a week over on YouTube, Mondays, Thursdays, and Sundays, where you can see a little bit of this. Third spoon, god damn, I knew there was something I wanted to bring up in the, god damn, I don't know what a fucking third spoon is, but I'm mad to get a pretty in-depth. Most definitely some of this. With a new 2009 twist. Uh, she pulls out of a vagina. Um, I'll give it to her though, because like, you know how like magicians kind of like do something and they pause dramatically? She took that dramatic pause. And occasionally some of this. Our favorite Halloween movies. What's up, Gorecasters? Welcome back here to the Gorecast. Yeah, okay, I'm here. I'm back.